And now I have a syringe with 50 millimetres of fluid in it. And I'd like to show you that I'm going to give all of this, which is 50 millimetres, 50 millimetres in 24 hours. And you'll see on there, the moment it's set to nothing. Zero, zero. So what I'm going to have to set it to will be five, zero, 50 millimetres of fluid per 24 hours. Okay, so I'm just going to go and change that from zero to five, zero. And to do that, I use this, the end of this, or you can use a paper clip. Can you see that I've changed that now to five, zero. So I can give all of the fluid that's in here that measures 50 millimetres, it will push along the fit length of 50 millimetres to deliver everything that's in here, all the fluid that's in here, in 24 hours. Okay. Just might say at this point in time that if I was using a 30 mil syringe, I would still be measuring the length of the syringe. It would have more fluid in it because the syringe would be wider, but I would still be measuring the length and that would be what I'd be giving in 24 hours. That's the crucial part. Now, I've primed it, I'm going to put the syringe in here and to do that you pull back, you press down on this white part here, you pull it back and then you place the syringe in this notch here and in the notch here. So you need to move that until the barrel of the syringe is in here and in here, caught in both places, and move it until this hits against this part of the barrel. So that when you start it, this little part can push the barrel of the syringe through here into the patient. Then you just keep it in place with this little leather retainer. That's it. Won't go without a battery. Got a battery here, a 9 volt battery. You'll hear it, but the battery is working. And in order to make sure that it's working, I can press this to start. Don't want to press it yet, because I haven't actually put it into the patient yet. So I'm going to take that out again until it stops, and now it stops, so that's fine. I didn't actually have to take it out. It stopped as it was in situ. But when I start this in the patient, I will push the start button and that will start the flashing light, which we'll look at just here. Right, I can put the cover on, because I can still access this button through the cover. Sometimes if you don't want people to access that button, you can put this cover on the other way. <coughs> Now I'm going to show you how the safety interval works. So here's the patient's skin. Here is the introducer inside. I don't know if you can see that. You see it's really sharp at the end. And so it allows you to put this into the skin at a subcutaneous angle, like this. Very, very good patient here. And then, you put the sticky dressing over the top to keep it in situ because you're going to have to put quite some force on this. Okay? Actually, I think my thing was right. And you need to keep it straight. That's one of the other things. You can see that's not completely against the patient's skin, but if you were in situ with the patient, it would be better if you had it against the patient's skin. And then afterwards you can come and do that. Alright, here we go. You pull it in a very strong, but hold it here because you have to pull quite hard on this white um, cover. And what happens is it pulls all this retainer, this it, sorry, introducer, 
here, it pulls it out and it covers it up, so it really reduces the amount of sharps injuries and makes it much, much safer to use. So here we go. And there it is, the sharp piece is retained within that. Do put it in the sharps box, but it's really not going to be that sharp for people. So now we have, let me just make sure this is going to stick to this particular wonderful, there we go. I don't know if I did actually show you, there's a bobbly bit at the bottom which actually goes onto the skin better. So this is the smoother edge and that's on the top. So the bobbly bit goes underneath. Now you have your primed safety intima, your primed extension lead and your syringe driver. And all you need to do is start it. And you can hear the noise, the whizzy noise. Can you hear that? Fine. I need only to have pressed it once, but I wanted you to hear that. So, now we can wait to see if it's working. And yeah, I'm afraid you have to wait for... There we are. Good. So now I know that this is working and that this is safely put into the patient. This will be delivering this buscopan, 20 milligrams, over 24 hours because it's going to push down until there's no more within this barrel and this barrel is 50 millimetres and we're going to deliver that in 24 hours. So that's, that's how it's done. Just want to show you um, how to take the battery out of here easily. You might like to show patients how to do this because we do use syringe drives at the end of life and when patients die, one of the most, most difficult things I've heard from relatives is that they hear this whizzy sound going on when their loved one is dead. So it's quite nice for you to be able to show them how to prevent that. So all you need to do is just open the back, show the battery and then give a really sharp tap. Well, we hope you found that useful. You may like to access your own syringe driver guidelines or policy so that you know exactly what's going on in your own area, but we hope this has been some kind of indication of how you go about putting a, a driver together. If you require any further information, please feel free to contact either Elizabeth or myself, and more information is also available on the website, the address of which is at the end of this presentation.